I'm Claire Barclay and I've made an exhibition titled Thrum for the Mac here. I'm based in Glasgow. Um, I um, went to art school there many years ago and I'm mainly known for making um, sculptural work, often large-scale sculptural work that's made um, in response to specific um, situations. For this exhibition, what I've you know, it's, it's a really uh, amazing opportunity to make work in a number of spaces um, at, at one time. And so I've made all new bodies of work, but the idea is that they, um, they, they speak to one another. So it's taken quite a while to um, conceive the different elements so that they actually they actually do that to some extent. So there's, there'll be kind of motifs that repeat um, and that are encountered again within different elements of the show as you move around the different spaces and up through the building. The, the title of the, the whole exhibition is Thrum and I, yeah, I was kind of interested in that word because of the sense that, you know, when I'm working with, with material, I, do, I don't think of it as inert. You know, you're aware of the, um, the, the kind of aliveness, it, it's, it's active kind of properties. And, um, and I'm very interested in how, um, you know, different materials kind of affect one another and coincide. So each element, each one element um, is not a work in its own right. It's only in, in the kind of combination of these different elements and the way they play off one another or the way they threaten one another or soil one another or um or are held in tension you know that that for me is you know the is, is where this kind of sculptural dynamic kind of comes in um the the word thrum seems to um seem to be kind of applicable because of that kind of resonance that that the, the um, the materials have, you know, especially with the, the suspended steel combs that actually, if you touch against them, they make this kind of vibrating sound. And it also happens to be um, a word that's used sometimes for the, the ends of the warp threads in, in weaving. My practice is quite different in terms of making installations and working with space, spaces and the architecture of the space and the the, the context, um, maybe the historical context that suggests the use of certain materials um, and forms. And, um, you know, so the, instead of work coming in and being placed within the gallery, uh, the different elements are coming in and they still have a lot of making to do within the space and in response to the space. And I can use the architectural features to um, accentuate that to um, um, have have us like have like play with the way that people encounter the work and, and navigate space. You know, so whether they're um, you know there certain things are framed or people are coaxed into more intimate areas or they're even cornered or blocked and have to then you know retrace their steps. So you know a lot a lot of the work is playing playing with that. Um, the spatial dynamics like that, um, and in this case now um, having the the skylight um, open for the first time in in, in a while, um, having the the kind of direct daylight coming down, and you know that kind of can accentuate the um, the the details of the the linen threads and and the the wires and different elements that are hanging below that um, quite sort of theatrical light that's kind of coming cascading down um, so really I you know this, that's the first time where I've been able to bring these different elements together um, because I can't you know, if I'm working in on you know making messy metal elements in in the workshop in the metal workshop then I can't bring the sort of pristine linen into that space and and so I'm I'm sort of trying it you know, to kind of conceive this sense of what the work will be, what the work will become, but I work with more like a, a mood in mind rather than a predetermined plan, um, because I want there still to be the, um, the degree of freedom that you have within the studio, within the gallery space, 
so the, the gallery becomes an extension of the of the studio and all the ex, you know the, the the surprises and the unexpected um, um, encounters with you know with with the, the the forms and materials that happen in the studio also then happen in the gallery um, and it depends on on the amount of time that you have within that space and lead up to the show how much risk you can take um, in in that um, in that process so I have this kind of loose theme with the the three different um, levels gallery levels within the building that relate to our kind of relationship with cloth um, and yeah the, the I, th I suppose the, the sort of sunken gallery it's a more kind of anthropological feeling to it the middle galleries in relation to um, a, a more direct physical contact with cloth through um, references to bedding and clothing and then on the top floor in the upper space um, a more industrial sensibility um, is, is apparent there in terms of you know production of cloth. One thing that's really important to the work is, in my um, thinking through work as I, I, as I evolve different forms um, is the sense of um, this your your kind of physical presence within spaces, um, your your proximity to the work. So a lot of the the installational devices that I use and sculptural devices are designed to kind of coax people up close. So you have this this quite intimate um, experience of the work, and you're looking at the detail and almost like the meaning is in the detail um, and also um, how you have this um, I suppose this kind of play on um, elements that look like they're part of or and suggest um, kind of functional everyday objects but at the same time they're kind of uncanny and familiar. So all the all the all the objects I make, all the objects I present as work are are made. They're not found objects, and so you can control um, that degree of familiarity and um, unfamiliarity. You know that that you can't quite place them in a context, but that you're aware of their physical properties by you. You're kind of drawing on this. Uh, kind of tacit um, understand the sophisticated understanding that we have of the material world that we live in. So we, you know we understand what different kinds of metal feel like, and the you know or um, the weight of something, or the way it feels against our skin. These these kinds of things are are very much informing the process of of making. So the, the first work that you encounter um, in the Sunken Gallery is called Still to Settle. And from the beginning, I had this sense of wanting to create a work that had a sense of the subterranean about it, that you would step down into that, into that space and encounter um, these large fabric forms that then have, um, are stained to the level of, of the ground floor. And... Um, and therefore have a sense of sort of having been excavated or part buried or um, and, and with the, they're stained with uh, an earth pigment and, and so they have a, a, a sense of the kind of archaeological about them as well and in amongst these large hanging forms um, that are made from linen then you encounter um, little kind of um, slits in the fabric that then reveal um, a series of um, machine metal objects inside or, or or outside but round the corner so you're you're um, coaxed and encouraged to move around the space in a, in a very particular way um, yeah so then these objects are a series of mirrors and bowls and combs and I've kind of chosen to use these objects because they're all particular forms that have been um, that, that they go right back to, um, you know, sort of early human existence and haven't really changed in their form since then um, and still share some of the, 
the kind of poignancy or, or kind of cultural references. Um, so uh, yeah, so I'm kind of interested in in these objects that kind of that sort of transcend time like that and are common to different cultures, different um, cultural um, uh, contexts. Um, and then and so some of these motifs then recur as you move throughout the space. So as you come up into the middle galleries, um, the tall gallery, um, in the smaller room, uh, which is a much more intimate space, these bowls are presented covered in um, a red ochre um, and they're just sitting on the floor alongside suspended sculpture, sculptural element which um, takes the form of these um, pillow forms that are also stained with, with, with red ochre as well. And, and they're filled with, uh, with feather which then stilling out and occupying the floor in that space. So the sense that often um, you're, you're aware of your presence within the space, that almost the, the, the visitor to space kind of completes the work to some extent. Um, and then moving through the space is unsettling these feathers on the floor and um, exaggerating the, your, your presence and relationship with the work. Although the objects suggest different functional, different functions or different scenarios or um, different uses, they are also at the same time kind of suggestive of the body and I think that comes from our um, I saw it like a kind of predisposition or an instinctive um, re way of reacting to things where we kind of anthropomorphize everything and or, or sort of read it as bodies. So these pillow forms within the, the, the small space that that work is called Bloom, um, these pillow forms, we almost read them as bodies before we read them as pillows. Um, and they're sitting alongside a series of print works um, um, that um, um, are, are titled Pairing Pressing and, and have been made as one body of works. Um, and so they also um, are very, it's like simple kind of geometric shapes, this kind of recurring shape that I use a lot of this, almost like a kind of art shape um, that appears in both sculpt the sculptures and the prints. You know, the way that you make sense of that is very much through associating it with, with kind of bodily experience. So I use a lot of transparent um, inks that then are layered to create these this sort of sense of a depth, um, of like a fleshy, fleshy kind of skin, almost as if um, you're just you're just um, portraying the skin, that, that surface, that, that kind of um, um, membrane between inside and outside of the body. In the tall gallery, the very tall space, um, I've made a work which um, involves a number of quilted forms, um, fabric forms that are hanging, suspended and tensioned in, you know, between the walls using wire and, and aluminium um, and, and weighted down with, um, with uh, sheet aluminium shapes. And so it, the, the idea of, you know, what the, the quilt kind of represents in terms of um, um, care and hospitality and, um, and swaddling and comfort and home um, and love, the, and, and also the, um, the way that, that you know, the work has gone into making these where it's you know, hundreds of hours of, of stitching, of hand stitching, um, is at odds with them then being um, ripped and uh, punctured with wire and, str and kind of um, like stretched across, uh, across the space. So there is that kind of contradiction with the, with the kind of violence of that. It, it's easy to kind of fall into feeling a need to um, explain the work in terms of a kind of thema thematic, the thematic kind of undercurrents that are there. Um, 
but yeah, I, yeah, I suppose I do need to stress that those really are just providing a, a framework and that you know people bring their own interpretations because the work is open um, and not fixed in terms of um, its meaning. And so I suppose I've always been interested in the, the kind of emotive aspect of material, how um, you know, when you encounter certain material, it triggers memory, it triggers um, an, an, your own understanding of that. And the, you, you, it tends to be both general and personal at the same time. So for instance, you know, there'll be a general sense that the upper space is referencing um, the industrial in some way, but then at the same time, people are bringing their own very particular personal um, responses to that um, and the sensory experience of it. So not just the visual, but the, um, the, the smells and the sounds of, of what they're encountering. Um, they help to activate that and, and people kind of create their own, um, their own readings and their own narratives. So they're like not, not a narrative that necessarily has a start, a finish and an end, but um, nevertheless some kind of um, uh, sort of suggestion of, of, of a scenario or a, or a drama being played out between the different elements that is informed by their own, their own kind of personal experience of material and form and when they've encountered that. So for me, that's the exciting time is bringing all these different things together and then responding to what happens and being able to have the ability to kind of let go of the, of the plan or the preconceived notions of what it might be and then just be able to intuitively and instinctually, instinctively um, work with, with what you have and the dynamic of the space. And, you know, and, and then, then sort of magical things happen so that the, the, the steel combs with the, with the rusted surfaces, when they're lying flat on the ground because they've been laid, unpacked and laid out, the minute then they are suspended in the space, they then activate that space in a particular way and one element then suggests the next element. So maybe then I have a better idea of what I want to do with the canvas and then there's a lot of layers involved, layering throughout the space, which was an intentional um, part of, 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 the, of the work, but then the, the, the solidity of the canvas then breaks that up. So then I want to cut through the seams in order to sort of open up these gaps again. So you're really just playing with all these different perspectives, the potential for, um, for sculptural dynamics, I suppose, as, you, as you're going along, and then also just trying to choreograph that in a way that doesn't um, or is in keeping with the kind of conceptual framework that you've set yourself. Um, I think what's been interesting in um, making the work for this exhibition as well is the way that we're, you know, we're all working with this backdrop of the pandemic and um, somehow that sense of um, like home and, and the sanctuary that that provides um, and an, a sort of awareness of, of other people's domestic situation has brought this other element into the work, this other layer of meaning. Um, and now what's happening um, you know, in, in the world in, in terms of the images that come into our domestic space from, from Ukraine and you know, now um, the sun can get the work in the sunken gallery, you know, still to settle it. Even the title, it, it starts to um, alter the meaning for me even. So the works are conceived through this kind of pro ongoing process of research and development and um, um, yeah, evolving work in the studio through process of experimentation with materials and you're bringing your own practice, your own history of your own practice to that as well. But then there are these other external forces that kind of come in and, and mix in with that um, to some extent in terms of how you 
yourself read the work and I think that's going to be interesting to see how an audience maybe is, is going to be influenced by, by these you know, two quite kind of phenomenal things that are happening at the moment.